If you've been around for a while, then you know that I love finding new ways to help my students understand musical concepts. And today we have not just a way to understand musical concepts, but we're actually doing a STEAM lesson where we're incorporating math along with music to help students understand shape partitioning and rhythm. So like everybody wins. So if you are watching this and you are a music teacher trying to teach your first grade, kindergarten, second grade students all about rhythm, you're in the right place. And if you are a homeroom teacher and you teach first grade or around there and you're trying to teach your students about whole and half shapes and partitioning and stuff like that, but you want to make it a little more fun, you're also in the right place because this is a STEAM lesson that integrates math and music in a very, very, very simple way to help either enhance your math class or help your students in music hopefully understand beats, rhythms, all that stuff that still confuse the fifth graders. Because y'all, if I have another fifth grader try to tell me the two eighth notes get two beats, I might cry. So we're, we're really trying to instill in my new first graders that that's not the case so that when they get to fifth grade, they'll understand. Now, my fifth graders were not mine in first grade, so I'm, you know, trying to not fuss too much. It's not totally their fault, but I'm really trying to make sure that my little kids understand this super, super, super well. This whole lesson was actually born out of a conversation between the first grade team and myself because they were teaching shape partitions and they wanted to incorporate some music and they were like, hey, can we do this and do rhythm? And I was like, yeah. So they did part of this lesson um, when they were working on that. And then I've been doing part of this lesson to work on rhythm and it worked out really well both ways. It's really simple, it's easy to incorporate and your kids will enjoy it. So first of all, make sure that if you are, especially if you're a music teacher, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Secondly, let me know if you're interested in more STEAM lessons because I work at a STEAM school. So I've been incorporating a lot of STEAM lessons into my classes and I would love to share them with you if you are at all interested in them. And third, I do want to let you know that anything that you see pop up here on the screen is part of my lesson pack that goes along with this. You don't have to buy the lesson pack to do the lesson, but you can. And then you have everything like pre-created for you to make your life a whole lot easier. Okay. Okay. Let's get into these shape rhythms. So from a musical standpoint, what we're doing first is we are keeping the beat. So either listening to a song and keeping the beat or singing a song and keeping the beat. We've been using mouse mousey just cause that's what we've been working on, but you can keep the beat along with anything. After we keep the beat on our bodies, then we're putting up on the screen some hearts where they're tapping the beats along with the beat. And I'm gonna say, great, what do my hearts represent? And they're like, oh, the beat. I'm like, great. So my hearts represent the beat. And then after I show them that, I show them a slide that has squares on top of the hearts and all the squares are whole. And I say, great. Now I'm adding some shapes on top of my hearts. My shapes are gonna represent the rhythm. And just FYI, we have already talked about rhythm versus beat and like long and short notes and that kind of stuff. We have not seen rhythms yet, but we have gotten that far. And I say, okay, now when we see these squares, we're gonna call them whole because it's a whole square. So I'm like, repeat after me, whole, 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 and then they do it. And then I show them squares that are cut down the middle. I say, okay, if I have a square and it's cut into two pieces, what do we call those pieces? And they're like, oh, half. I'm like, great. So this is a half and this is a half. So together I'm gonna call it half, half. So when I see this slide where it has four squares that all are partitioned into two, I'm gonna call it half, 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 half. And for my homeroom teachers who are not familiar, that's the difference between rhythm and beat. Beat is that steady pulse in music. So like, mouse, mousey, little mousey. The rhythm is the long and short notes that go along with it. So it's the duration of a note, how long it lasts. So like, mouse, mousey, little mousey. And with the little kids, I really emphasize that the rhythm is the way the words go, which doesn't you know carry forever. But for now, rhythm is the way the words go. The beat is the heart of the music and it stays the same. And that's kind of how we differentiate between those. Then I show them a couple different slides that have different variations of holes and half halves and I'll read them and then they'll repeat after me. And usually we'll do them twice. So I'll read it, they read it, and then I'll clap it and they'll clap it. So it might be like half, half, whole, half, half, whole. And just so you know, they're gonna have a hard time understanding that like, this is half half the one square with the two halves is half half and that's the whole point of this lesson and why i'm doing this lesson the way it is is because i want them to understand that that is two sounds but on the same beat so we have half half but they live on the same heartbeat we go through a couple different ones and then i get to the point where they get to 
create their own. So how I like to do this is I put up on the board um, a blank sh um, slide and it has holes and half halves and it has the hearts. And then what I do is I have my students sit on a number and I pull up popsicle sticks that have the number. So I'll be like, all right, number three, come up to the board and decide, you know, what's going to be the next one in our pattern. So they'll come up and they'll either choose whole or half half and add it to our hearts. Once we get four, then we'll clap it and say it. And then I'll take those off and we'll do the next four students and we keep going till everybody gets a turn. Hopefully if there's time, this is a really easy way to just help them get more involved in it and just make it a little bit more fun and a little more like whimsical and helps them of course, identifying the holes and the half halves and reading and all that kind of stuff. So by the way, also homeroom teachers always do groups of four or groups of eight is going to just work a lot more easily because most of the music we listen to in Western world, most things that are on the radio are going to be in groups of four. So that just like makes the most sense to the kids. Now, after we do that, if you have the lesson pack, there's also a video play along that has holes in half half so the kids can play along with the video. And so you can totally do that as well. And then depending on how I'm feeling and what we're up to, I might add instruments or I might have them work on their own. So in that case, what I would do is I would give them manipulatives. And by the way, if you don't have a board that like you can touch and move around, you can also like do squares of like whole and half half and have them add those to um, just to the board. They can tape them up, they can put them on the floor, whatever's fine. Um, so if I have them do them by themselves, then I'll give them a heartbeat chart and I'll give them, I usually will put a baggie with all the little cards inside of it, which is what I have done now. And I try to do four holes and four half halves in every single bag. Of course, the first time you use them, they get all mixed up. But the first class, you know, gets those really pristine, like ready to go manipulatives. And then depending on what we're doing, there's kind of two different options. So one is what we call dictation, which is actually what we did today in my class. So for that, what happens is I say a pattern and they have to create the pattern with their manipulative. So if I say whole, half, half, whole, whole, then they create on their heartbeats, whole, half, half, whole, whole. So that's number one. And then that's really great because you can walk around and you can assess who is understanding like which one is which and all of that kind of stuff. And I usually take that as a grade. The other option is you can have them create their own. And sometimes I'll do both. I'll do like dictation, then I'll have them create their own. Um, they can do it in partners, they can do it by themselves where they create their own pattern and then they clap the pattern and they make a new pattern. And again, you can walk around and you can assess who is correctly clapping them. And that's a good way to get an assessment too. So all of that would be done over one or even two days. And then on the next day, we would go to phase two. So phase two is now, instead of just having one shape, we're gonna have lots of shapes. If you are a homeroom teacher, you could also, by the way, I didn't mention this, but you could also just give them whole shapes and have them partition them themselves. So you could do that as well. But on the second day, we're gonna add some body percussion. So instead of just clapping, we're gonna have different ones. The ones I used in the slide is if it's a triangle, we're gonna clap. If it's a circle, we're patting our legs. And if it's a square, then we're going to snap. Um, but you can use whatever you want. It's fine. It doesn't matter at all. And then we'll go through a couple different ones. So now we have whole and half half, but we also have different body percussion that we might need to do. So I'm looking at um, one of the ones in the slides and it's like half, half, whole, half, half, whole. Okay. And so different things like that. You can have them echo or you can have them read without echoing different things like that. There's also, again, a video play along with that. And then they can also, again, make their own patterns, which is what we are doing next week in class, um, is they're working in groups to create their own body percussion patterns. You can do it on the slides. You can do it with the manipulatives. We're doing it in the manipulatives, and then hopefully they'll get to perform them for each other. We'll see how that goes. Then after this, on a whole nother day, we're finally going to introduce rhythm. So we'll look and we'll read through some whole and half halves with that. We call that iconic notation. Um, and then we'll add the rhythm. So I'll say, okay, so when we have one whole sound on one whole beat, and it's just one sound on one beat, we're going to see this thing called a quarter note. I call it ta. So when we see it, we're going to say ta. And then we look at them and say, okay, repeat after me, ta, ta. Ta, ta, and they repeat. And I'm like, great, if we have two sounds, then we're gonna have two rhythms. These are called eighth notes, and each one's called T. They're faster though, because they only get half a beat instead of a whole beat. So then we have T, 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 T. 
Now, if you're a music teacher and you're looking at what I just put on the board, I am doing single eighth notes and I am not barring them yet because I have heard from a lot of teachers and I have recently experienced, this is my first year doing this, but it has been working so far of having the kids look at the single eighth notes first before we bar them has been helping them understand them a little bit better. So this is why I made the whole lesson was to help with them understanding the two sounds on one beat. Then we'll go through and just like we did before, we'll have different patterns that are ta's and tt's and so on and so forth. These are um, quarter notes are the one sound on one beat and eighth notes are the two sounds on one beat or a half a beat. Um, and for my non-music people, I call them ta and tt. Definitely check with your music teacher and see what they call them because Unfortunately, we all have different things that we call them. So we read them as Ta and TT, but they might call them something else. So just be aware that you might need to change that. So then we go through and we do pretty much all the same steps that we've already done, but now with Ta and TT. So we're actually reading the rhythms instead of just saying whole and half, half. So this is kind of where we crossed over from going from more mathy to more music. And we're really trying to get those holes and half halves or those ta's and tt's figured out. So you can do the dictation, you can do the composition, you can have the body percussion composition. You can do those, all of those activities to help make sure that they understand. I do like to do dictation to make sure they understand at some point. So do be aware of that. And then one other thing that I've been doing is giving them a worksheet that has like a heart. So either a whole heart or a heart split in half and having them write ta or the tt's in there so that I'm, I know that they understand what's going on. So this is a slightly different way that you can work on your quarter and eighth notes, but so far it's working. So hopefully it continues to work. I'll give you an update if it does. Um, I would love to know in the comments if you are someone teaching math with a little music or music with a little bit of math. And of course, make sure that you make a really big deal in your lesson plans about how these are steam lesson plans because we got the m for math and the a for arts which is music so thanks so much for watching let me know if you want more steam lessons i can i have a lot now so let me know that down below and i will leave a link down below this lesson pack in case you're interested in grabbing it to make this yourself and i will see you in the next one thanks so much for watching bye